Good evening. Here we are once again doing our terabyte, and we are so fortunate that the Father's speaking to us. I, I got Josh there holding on to a verse, and he'll do it right quick. It'll come to you as he reads out of Ephesians chapter 1, verse 10, because we're ducktailing uh, where we left off. Go ahead, Josh. Read it. To administer at the completion of time, to gather together in one, all in Messiah, both which are in the Shamaim and which are on earth in him. Wow, that's powerful. In heaven and in earth, which are in him. So now if you're born, now watch closely, pay attention. This is, has to do with how you and I journey through our, our wilderness, come out of the wilderness into our promised land and how, be, how we begin to take over and take dominion over the land that the father told our first parents, set of parents. Okay, our second set is uh, the second Adam, the last Adam and the church. That's our mom, the new Jerusalem that is descending from above that we all should call mother. OK, so anyway, going back to that idea, don't let go of that. you got to get a hold of this. Renew your mind that you are connected to the head, Yeshua HaMashiach, and the body, Yeshua HaMashiach. We're not saying Hashem like the Jewish brothers and sisters that are ashamed to call on his name. The Father instructed us in Scripture, in Exodus chapter 3, verse 15. It talks about his name will be forever. That name, what, what, what name is it? Well, it wasn't Jesus, but when you ask people today in our Western culture, in our uh, tilt-top buildings, in our brand new edifices that have no steeples anymore, but we got a lot of glass, the Cathedral of Glass in uh, Orange County, hallelujah, and Santa Ana down there somewhere, but anyway, it's called the Cathedral yeah, of Glass. It's, it's just a beautiful cathedral, but I mean, hey... You know, we're, the Father's interested in you. You are the living stones. You are the habitation that he wants to dwell and live in. That's why he said, in my Father's house are many mansions, John 14. We're not going to go there because I want you to see this in John chapter 17. This is the prayer that the Father begins to instruct the Son to pray before he's called up back. Remember, he came from the Father, he came to earth, and he returns to the Father through the Garden of Gethsemane, he pours out his soul. The Father receives the sacrifice of his soul. Hallelujah. And now we're in him and he's in us. But the way you renew your mind daily to remind yourself of that is you've got to think and renew your mind. I'm in him. And then you've got to quicken and go, yes, I'm in the head and the body. Of who? Of Mashiach, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Son, the only begotten Son. This is what makes it so powerful. Because if you miss it, that you're in Him, then you start idolizing that you know the Word and you're letting the Word grow in you. Well, that's a truth, but it's a half-truth until you could settle that you're in Him. The reason why you're in Him, it was, in him, it was the act of unmerited favor. Okay, I know they use grace, but we kind of go back to the principle that was used all through the covenant. <laughs> yeah, and then we came into the Brit Hadashah, the new covenant, which has been renewed, revived, and re, re strengthened and refreshed, and all the re's of the new covenant. Brett Hadasha, New Covenant. So in John 17, he, I, I'm just so thankful that he says this. These words spake Yeshua and lifted up his eyes to Shamayim and said, Father, the hour has come. Go ahead and esteem your son, that your son also may esteem you, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. The Father gives the Son sons that will come into the full measure of the full knowledge, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13, until we come into, until we all come into. See, we're all coming into in our order. And the beauty of it is that the Son prayed for you and I. 
If you're sitting and listening, if you're taking notes, if you're telling others, this is what's going to get you by when everything starts falling apart around you. This is where you're going to need to hear these words and put them to work. Okay, let's go on. Uh, and he has given to him. And this is life eternal that they might know thee, the only true Yah and his son, Yeshua HaMashiach, whom thou hast sent. S-E-N-T. The word sent there is apostolos. It's a clean word in the Greek, but it means one that's sent, that has authority to represent who sent him. Okay, so now you see how the kingdom begins to get structured. What will the righteous do if the foundations be removed? Remember, we read that. That's in Psalms 11, verse 3. Uh, and, and then the foundations that were removed uh, makes a people go out of course. We don't have a course. We don't have a righteousness mindset. We don't have a sanctified <laughs> mind and body. I mean, we got so many distractions. You, the television is full. The commercialization is to really revamp the way you think, think so that you even talk like I'm bleh, bleh, you know, stuttering. Why? Because it's all goofy. Everything coming through that boob tube is goofy. That's why you got to get back to the word because even with your phones, there's, I mean, they can do all kind of subliminal stuff. Our scientists, our techs, you know, they're governed by the government who knows exactly what you're saying and doing. They're probably listening to us. But so be it. Get thee behind us, Satan, and know that the Father will come forth in its time. Hallelujah. Verse 4, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest to me. Slip down to verse 7. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but I pray for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am esteemed in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I have come to thee, Holy Father. Keep through thy own name. Oh, there's that name. Now see, here it is. That name. These, these verses are all Old Testament Psalms. That's what they are. And if you followed suit, Exodus tells you, this is my name forever. So then you, re, you kind of begin to restore and reform the way you're thinking. And you start flowing in this encapsulized time release scripture that's working in you to grab your attention and to release himself in you that's why you pour the anointing you smear the anointing and you rub the anointing mm -hmm. he's in us rubbing us on the inside to work his way out of us and there will be a people that will show forth his esteem mm -hmm. and verse 10 and all mine that are thine and thine are mine and i am esteemed in them and now i am no more in the world was he in the world was he not yes he was but he was speaking about his spirit man connecting with his father and you and i have the same ability today because it's the same spirit that was in him that quickened him quickens us today i will give you a comforter and i will not leave you comfortless john 14 15 and 16 and that's his job. Now verse 11. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. These who? These disciples that were born from above. Not born again, but born from above. Because he said you need to be born by the Spirit. The Spirit came from above. Do you see how I relate that? And that's why you got to think and renew your mind to thinking, man, I'm born from above. Yeah. You are a sent one. You have an apostolic, apostolic. Sheliac is the Hebrew term. And you have a sheliac, whew, you have a sheliac mindset that you're here to restore and reform once again the restitution of all things. Book of Acts, chapter 3. <coughs> okay. Uh, verse 12, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. 
Those that are given, those that thou givest me, I have kept, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them, because they have they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. So we're not going at the last trumpet. We're not going at the rapture sound. We're not going by the rapture ministry of the prophets, the doom and gloom and everything they're talking about right now. He just spoke the word and that word's eternal. It doesn't, it will return unto him and it will not return void. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank you for that. I thank you for that. I have given them thy word and the word thy word and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from evil. They are not of the world even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Now, when you go back to the diagram that Joshua shows you, the laver right before the door to the holy place, that's what he's talking about. That verse there fits that. That's where you locate that. So now you see how the Father is preparing you through the Son who said you're not going to lose, <laughs> who said you won't be taken out of here who said you will come to full salvation. That's powerful in itself. If you can understand what I just began to rave about. Amen. Now turn to 1 Peter chapter 2 and uh, we'll prepare to land this airplane. <laughs> 1, Peter, oh God. 1 Peter chapter 2. Hallelujah. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9. Glory to Okay, and we got a couple minutes, so I got you. Got are you there? Amen. All, all right, First Peter chapter two verse nine. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of Him who has called you out of darkness into His marvelous light, which in times past were not a people but are now the people of Yah, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. You were unmerciful. He spared you by his mercy. He brought you in, cleansed you, and washed you. So now when you go to the labor, every time, because you're wise enough to realize, man, every time I go to that labor, that place of experience, that second piece of furniture there after the brazing altar, I feel cleansed, I feel refreshed, I feel strengthened. Why? Because mercy is a reflection of who you begin to see. Since you're connected to the head, and he's the head and the body, according to Ephesians. Oh my, 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 my. Okay? So now, now go back to Ephesians again. Hallelujah. Go back there because I want you to see as we finish. Ephesians chapter 4. Okay, and here's that verse that we always hold on to. Actually, let's see if we can read. Um, let's see. Yeah, go to verse 21. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 21. Okay? This is what took place when you exchanged being born from above, putting the word to work, going to the labor and reflecting, living in the tabernacle that you're seeing probably for the first time. But we're teaching you so that you can get a working visual of your journey in the spirit. Do you know that your heavenly father dwells in you? Because you made mention of him when you said, Father, I love you. I know I'm a sinner. Come into my heart. Change me. And you said in Jesus' name. Some of you said, oh, help, without even mentioning Jesus. And he did. Why? Because he knew your heart. He turned your heart from, from a place of being unmerciful to a place being filled with mercy. So here we are, verse 21. Far above all principalities and powers and mights and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and has put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the ecclesia, which is his body, the fullness of him that fills all in all. He's the head and he's the body. You have to train yourself to think and know I'm part of the head. 
and I'm part of the body. Tonight, if you see yourself and you go to sleep with that in your heart, that seed will be germinated by him because he says in Romans, he standeth and maketh intercession for you day and night. And since if you know that, then you begin to go to sleep by faith. And he says he gives his beloved sweet sleep and has no, uh, there's no undisturbed composure. So believe me, family, you can get on this journey with us here at House to House Discipleship Institute. While we're on it, hit the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up, thumbs down. We want to know some comments and we'll see you again. And until we do, may his countenance shine upon you. May he be your refuge, your shield and your buckler. May he be your total shalom. May you know that he prayed a prayer that you aren't leaving. You're not going to go through any tragic tragedy because the work in you is not done. Until we see each other again. Shalom.